Stanford University. Greetings and kind welcome. Over the course of our time together, we have looked at what integration means in terms of somatic practice and the value of really bringing the rivers of the principles together with our, with our forms of practice. Now, this isn't always done in practices like Tai Chi and other forms of Qigong. Sometimes, you know, there are principles that underlie all manner of practices. The ones that we're undertaking here to have the deepest potential value of our engagement with these ancient forms and as I said yesterday, they're not just ancient forms. They have evolved uh, over the centuries. In fact, it's very interesting to me, as someone who has cross-referenced many different traditions of both martial arts and Qigong health practices, to note that in the contemplative centers where many of these kinds of forms and practices were engaged with, were worked with very kind of diligently, almost seriously, I think you could say, that they, they were written down and the, the impact of those practices, the results of those practices were noted over long periods of time. What does that actually do? So now we have different ways, different metrics for connecting with certain external values. And we can, you know, we can check blood pressure and blood pH, and we can kind of check on the emotional, psychological level, the degree of sense of settling, calmness, what we call centeredness, what I call groundedness, and that is the the ability to, to settle and feel and be open, be open in a way that the boundaries of your being are well protected, but you still have the sense of the ability to connect empathetically, compassionately. And those are great, important values. If we, as a species, human species, are to go forward, continue to evolve in ways that bring out the absolute best in what we can be and do as human beings. On the level of that integration, I think there is no limit. It could be tremendously beautiful and joyous. And that's where that's where I'm heading with you. <laughs> now, yes, this is not to disclaim the, the many, many challenges that we have in life. There have always been challenges throughout time. This is a unique time in human history, is it not? And the engagement that we have with practice I feel is absolutely essential. It gives you a home base. It gives you a reference to continue to feel and connect with development. So we're developing all of our intelligence. And that's not just cognitive. It can be somatic. It can be musical. It can be... <laughs> Well, you know all the ones that, that you may be engaged with. Uh, dramatic and uh, carpentry and dancing and swimming. All the engagement of these forms of practice can really be a deep pathway to both the embodiment 
into that sense of settling and centering and knowing who we are as human beings. When we talk about knowing who we are as human beings, it certainly engages us with our historical self, knowing where we were born, who our parents are, who our siblings are, who our friends are, and having that sense of unity with them, have, have some sense of connection with them. Very important. And that, that wholesomeness that comes from that connection, that feeling of safety, I think, is essential for us in moving forward. Uh, so much has been talked about recently, and rightly so, of the impact of trauma and what trauma is, to a certain degree, what it is not, and ways and skillful means for us to engage with it. Skillful means is a term that's often used in Buddhist uh, speak. So, but what it really means, and what you already know it to mean, is the, the, the practices that actually bring about good results, bring about positive results. So today's theme of our practice is deepening in this integration. And of course you know that that's just not like an on and off switch. Integration takes time and it takes our interest. It takes us coming back to the mat, coming back to the cushion, you know, coming back to the, to this, to the place where we practice which of course is everywhere. <laughs> you can practice everywhere in that sense, bringing about the best of your own nature to, to listen compassionately, to develop for yourself the, the wisdom that is connected in empathy and knowing our connection, our interconnection, and as I also said, the intra-connection, which is the way that we... Uh, Practice our Qigong. The Qigong energy work, Dao Yin, as I said, another name for that, and also the Neigong, the internal art, the internal art of this practice. So we talk about Wei Qi, that is kind of the external expression, and we talk about the Neigong or Ne Qi. Uh, and that is the way of working with our, with our chi, with our life force, and becoming more and more f fluent with our own subtle nature. Then as we do, we understand our human being more, and in understanding our human being more, we understand humanity. We understand our connection, our uniqueness, and our similarity with all human beings. So therefore, that's the, that's the groundwork for compassion, really. The practices of this integration of our Qigong is one to more deeply release the things that are contracting for us. So when I was talking about the tra trauma that all human beings experience at one time or another, sometimes more profoundly, sometimes more subtly. Nevertheless, having a skill of knowing how to release, how to dissolve, not in any kind of ultimate sense, but move through the energetic blockages, which is where memory and trauma like that, or the trauma that is in our memory, lives inside the fabric of our bodies. So I'm bringing this up as a way of kind of summarizing what we've talked about, what we've practiced, and what we've begun to practice. Integration happens gradually, and it, it happens through your interest in it. it. happens through you coming to that mat of 
your, your practice field. And when you do so, it's important to also remember patience, to be patient with the development and the transformation. We live in the age of instancy, where everything happens all at once, and, uh, you know, it's uh, kind of the McDonald's uh, of life these days, where everything is fast and supersized. <laughs> you know what I mean. So we take when we undertake contemplative practice, when we undertake meditation, we undertake these deeper engagements in understanding both the themes of our potential and then integrating them with form and energy, that develops a beautiful resilience in our human being. Yes, it's all a gradual unfolding. We must allow this unfolding and have that quality of patience so that you don't do a few sessions or even a few weeks of practice and say, you know, where's the result? The result can be in process, and if we hurry through it too much, trying to look for uh, an outcome, we might miss the genuine transformation that happens both in our perception of ourselves and the deeper feeling of release and liberation that genuinely happens when we practice well and with some continuity. So the profound integration is a, is a process is, is one in which we engage with ourselves, and sometimes we engage in community like we're doing now. We are a community engaged in the consideration of what it means, what is the value of transformation. Certainly, on the most fundamental level, the, the integrative practices of the Qigong can help to bring about health, and health for us is certainly the health of our human being. Uniquely, the practices of Qigong work on the inside of the body with the uh, internal organs, and also, as I've said throughout the course of our time together, really work on the brain and nervous system, and kind of allowing those rivers of communication that we call our nervous system to be open, fluid, receptive, be responsive. The transformation that takes place there is not metaphysical. We know from the good work of, of uh, Liz Blackburn and so on, as she worked with the telomeres and understanding telomeres, that the lengthening of the telomeres happens most profoundly, you'll see, I forget what, exactly what page that is, but she talks about the value of mindfulness, meditation, and qigong as, as modalities that genuinely work with that trans, transformation. So today, as we engage with our gestures of qigong, I'm going to introduce a sequence of flow and practice with you that you can reference and come back to, work with, and allow the, the layers of deepening to uh, take place. As I said on the first day and in the uh, initial lecture, these are layered teachings. You can't just bring everything out at once. For one thing, it's just too many <laughs> words. And as you know, words can be sometimes confusing, especially when we're bringing in Dharma teachings and non-dual teachings, there's often very much paradoxical nature in the way that things are spoken about and represented. But if we be patient and look to the, the inner understanding, the intuitive understanding of our practice, well then, that also unfolds in insight and wisdom, if I may say. 
kind of wisdom that's not about thinking wise things. Of course, it's great to think wise things and to listen to the great teachers of the past and, and present and think of, think of the things that they say. Consider that. That is a process of contemplation, is it not? But for now, for our deepening through body, mind, and spirit, we are going to begin to do some of our Qigong. So if I may, I'd like to invite you to find your way into standing, if that is what is appropriate for you, and we will begin this guided process of practice in the profound deepening and integration of body, mind, and spirit. Just take a moment and move before we engage in any specific form. Just taking a moment, feel through the body, relax the breath, have the sense of settling. We've practiced yesterday and in the previous sessions with the natural abdominal breathing. That's a sense of the qualities of the breath being soft and fine, smooth, relatively quiet, relatively even, like that. So just feeling through, connecting with the earth, nothing here to figure out, just come into this language of feeling in being. So here we are, settled into Wu Qi, Wu, W-U in Chinese, B-U in uh, the Japanese, pointing to that field of spacious, non-dual field presence. Yeah, you can't figure it out. You can't grab it, but it's right here. <laughs> okay. Let's begin from the settling here into radiant body breathing. In-breath and settling smooth release. Let the action be purposeful, the relaxed intention guiding this movement, letting the flow of motion connected with the breath relaxed, naturally aligned. All right, let that settle this time. Just a few cycles of radiant body breathing and come right to your standing practice once again. Perfectly fine to take these moments, these brief moments in your standing practice to feel through the whole system of your human being. Relaxed, feel the plumb line of centeredness flow through your body. That's very good. We're going to come right from here into a practice that is sometimes called yin yang breathing, opening and closing breath in other traditions. But by any name, it's a wonderful practice. This is how we do this. We wrap and extend forward, but we're not coming into the bow just now like we do and will do this evening. And then with an in-breath, just let the hands come out to the side. You're not trying to open all the way out. You're just letting the hands come out, feel the in-breath, and then exhale with the close. Relax that base of the spine, then a gentle lengthening and opening here. That's right. In-breath. 
It's a great opportunity to release the mid-back and that wrap forward. Good. We're going to do one more cycle of this practice. In-breath. Exhale. Hands in front and easy down. Just like in water, this important release, smooth connection is that quality that I referenced from Aikido as being Zanshin, the continuity. So easy, it's effortless. Just relax into that smooth openness of your presence awareness. And as you practice, when you return to your Wu Chi, we, you notice we do a flow of, of motion, and then we do a few moments of that settling. Please feel free to take a little bit longer time if you choose in that stillness. That's a wonderful integration time for your, in your practice. Yesterday, we practiced with full spinal breathing. You remember full spinal breathing. Full spinal breathing is that drawing back, letting the heart and chest feel the sternum gently lift with the in-breath, and then flow forward. And this is where we find ourselves in the space of that of the spinal bow. You're bringing the chin in, but you're not collapsing the chin on the throat. It's all in service of letting the cervical vertebrae open and have that sense of lift in your head. That's that wrap. When you do so, also let go of the sacral area, if that's the right term for you, and you let that settle down so the sacral lumbar area open as you settle down. So you get a beautiful stretch of the spine, a very gentle but useful stretch. So the head's lifting a little bit, the tailbone's settling down, and of course, the accordion of your spinal column opens very gently. And it opens gently in the other way. Yeah. Anterior line inside opens that way. Throw it open. You, you've got good length. You're, in, you're open through the hips and pelvis. We do this as a flow now. So let's practice this together. We begin with the hands and palms up, not too high down, relax those shoulders. And as you take an in-breath, you draw the elbows back, feel the in-breath open and lift, and then extend forward into your bow, and then in-breath. You have the form now, and I invite you now to find your particular rhythm of the breath, which will change, maybe even cycle by cycle, but we're allowing that deep, full in-breath and that deep, full exhalation. The invitation in this practice is to feel the smoothness Allow the smoothness. Wonderful in here to practice underdoing range of motion. Remember that principle? That allows for the deeper release through the fabric of the body, especially in the length of the spine. This is a non-doing, a wu-wei engagement, not engagement. Good. One last. And completing release. 
return for a moment to your Wu Qi. And see if you can really let go of your wrists. Let your hands be soft and open. The sense of settling down, presence, grounded, natural alignment through your legs, through the bottoms of your feet. That's it. Very good. All right. So I'm going to do a practice with you now, a Qigong practice that is sometimes called compass breathing because it opens up like a field of the compass and it has a couple of dimensions to it. So let's practice a couple of the parts and then we weave it together in the... Uh, in a whole of the, the fluid sequence. What we're going to do first is let the hands flow out to the side like radiant body breathing. And as the hands come up, we're going to take the palms and press them upward like so. So you want to do this in a way where you're not engaging the shoulders so much, but expanding the palms up in such a way that you can feel the torso, the whole abdominal field, right to the base of your pelvis, relaxed and gently, but gently stretching open. And then what we'll do is we'll release that with an exhalation. Down. And then in breath to right about here. Then exhale. The hands will be in front. Then you in-breath just like we just did with full spinal breathing and release down. So let's review the part, the parts again, and then we'll bring that together as a sequence. So if the first part is here. And pressing the palms up. This is with your exhalation. And then in-breath right about to here, and then exhale, down, in-breath, exhale with the palms up this time, in-breath as you're drawing back, like full spinal breathing, and turn your hands over and subtle release. Be sure as you complete that sequence to feel the completion of that, so we're not just kind of coming into the next thing, right? You are settling and find neutral, even for a split microsecond there, zero. Then you begin again. Let's do this flow. We'll do it together. I'll guide us through. In breath. Now begin your exhalation as you press the hands up. Look up a little bit. In breath. Now X. In breath. Hands out to the side. Exhale, turn your palms up. In breath, draw your hands in. And exhale down. Very good. In breath. Right about to shoulders, then begin your exhalation. Exhale as your palms press up and feel that lengthening through the mid-body. Then in-breath. X. Good. Breathing in and out through the nose. In-breath. Exhale as your palms turn up. In-breath as you draw back as in full spinal. Let that release. We're going to do that practice, that flow, one more time. In. Good fullness of in-breath. Now exhale as you're pressing upward. Good. In-breath. About here. Exhale. In-breath. Just under shoulders. Turn the palms up. In-breath. That's it. Turn the hands over. Settle that down. Release your wrists now. 
stand in Wu Chi. And if your arms are a little bit away from the sides of the body, that's just fine. Allows for a greater lateral opening. Settle. See if you can feel that integrity of the strength of their body without unneeded tension. And we're just here for a moment, just to feel, just to be. Nothing to figure out here. Just allow the, the beautiful intelligence of your being to re-inform your physiology, your structure, your energy. We're going to do one more completing practice here in the standing form and then come to do some of our seated Taoyuan meditation together. This particular practice, I think you will really like. It is called the Eight Expressions of Qi. These, are, these expressions are paired and they express the Negong aspects of absorbing and extending, gathering, lifting, opening, and closing. We're going to practice those forms uh, individually and then weave the eight expressions together in this beautiful meditation of uh, qi, of integration. The first gesture, very similar to things that we have done so far, and this is called gather. And gather is this in-breath that we do right to here. So gather is through the feet, through the hands, earth, absorbing that nice earth energy. It is paired with this, in-breath, gather, and then as you let your hands down, you turn your palms up to rise. As you rise, you re relax the body, almost as if you were lifting something right here, like that. That's an exhalation. In-breath, gather. Then exhale, rise. There's your X. Do that one more time. Gather. Exhale, rise. Good. The next pair of practices that we will seamlessly integrate with that is to expand and close or contract, contract. This is what everything in the universe does. This is what your body on its micro level is doing even as we speak. The lungs open. Pulse. This gesture does not have to be big, grand, or dramatic. Just feeling that opening, expanding, exhale, closing pulse. Everything breathes. Everything pulses in manifestation one way or another. So when we're doing this expansion with the breath, it's not just what's happening here with the arms. It's like feeling, intending everything to be nourished by the breath, which it is, in breath. And then exhale, release. That's our next pair, to expand, or to open, to close, or contract. When you're doing that, it's not just the action of the arms, but feel the expansion, the whole body expanding a little bit, and then closing from the inside. This allows the whole column of the, of the inside of the body to be nourished by this movement. It's really delicious. So that's the movement here. Open, close, or expand and contract. Let's bring the first four together. We've got Gather, earth connection, and then exhale, rise. Expand, open, exhale, and close. That easy. Those are our first four movements. 
The next pair is called flow in and flow out. In a way, we are feeling absorbing as we make this little bit of gesture here to absorb the chi and then press down lightly in this ellipse of extending. So flow in, whole body is absorbing in-breath. Exhale, release. Press out through your hands. Just practice that in-breath. Good. There's that gentle bow of the spine, but gentle press and release. That's five and six. Seven and eight are the completing gestures. So from the extension here, this, we're going to settle, and that's just like a smooth settling. This is an in-breath. And then release. That's eight. Seven, in-breath, as your hands flow down, release, let go. That's when you return to that sense of uh, beautiful alignment, centered, natural presence. And how I was referencing it earlier is a moment of being in the alignment of neutral. Those are the eight expressions of chi, ways of opening and closing, absorbing, extending, gathering. Let's practice this as a sequence now. We'll just do a few repetitions of the practice. Here it is. Gather in breath. Exhale, rise. Here's an in breath to open, expand. Exhale, contract. No hurry, no hurry. Flow with an in-breath. In. Press and extend with an exhalation. And extend your fingers. Let that settle downward with an in-breath. And then release with your exhalation. Neutral. Gather. In-breath. Exhale. Expand, open. Exhale, close. Flow in is to absorb the chi in space. Exhale, receive with a sense, or release with a sense of generosity. Then let that settle with an in-breath. Natural alignment, natural posture, let go. Rise, expand, contract, flow in, flow out, settle, release. We're going to do this practice one more time. And as we do so, we're going to underdo a little bit more. So we've been practicing what's called a large or larger frame of reference. Those of you that have practiced Tai Chi know that the large frame looks like a whole body thing, and the smaller frame still has all the energy in there. It's just expressed with a, um, a more uh, subtle uh, uh, expression of the form. <laughs> okay, let's practice the eight expressions of chi, underdoing it a little bit to stay in the feeling of the energies that are present here. So we've got gather and then rise and expand. Let that be subtle for you. Exhale, close. We flow in, we flow out, then let that settle with your in-breath, release, exhalation, good, just like that. 
Wu Chi. Good. Now with an in-breath, this time the hands align. We're going to settle down, bring in this, this gesture of balance in the heart. So settle here for just a moment. Balancing in the field of the heart. In the traditions of these inner arts, it is said that all energy eventually balances in the heart. So we settle here, palms, fingertips lightly together. Just take a moment in this field of integration. Take a moment for the well-wishing for our own health and for the health and well-being of all of creation, all of nature. May we with all beings together express and know the value of kindness. May we with all beings together know the wisdom of compassion. May we with all beings together express the radiant joy of knowing who we are in all dimensions and continue to practice and nourish harmony and equanimity Okay, thank you. Well done, nicely practiced, so nice. Let's come to sit, we'll do a seated Tao Yin and then take a little time for our reflection. Thank you. Just a moment or so of this sense of natural alignment, settling, actually feeling through the body Remember, we sense the base of the body from the waist and the hips, pelvis, all the way down in whatever gesture you're using to sit. Just feeling the natural support of the earth without unneeded tension through the legs at the base of the spine. The natural openness and lift through the rest of the body. Joints open, relaxed. And we bring some attention to the space of the head and the senses so that the muscles of our face are relaxed. The tongue rests naturally in the mouth in the soft gaze. Just allow sight and sound, taste, smell, feeling to be naturally present. The flow of feeling and thought, emotion also arise naturally without any need to coax or figure out right now. We feel the, the presence of the breath, this wonderful mechanism of life. And we can take just a moment in cultivating those qualities. It does not mean forcing those qualities but allow the breath to be soft and fine, smooth, quiet, always natural. Feel the abdominal field expand with that in-breath, naturally close with the exhalation, just as we have done in our Qigong. The Tao Yin for this evening is one of integrating a few of the forms that we have practiced. One is full spinal breathing in the seated form. Then we're going to come into yin and yang breathing. And from there, we'll take this gesture from yin and yang, like integrating breath, pressing down. And as you press down, it's like almost like a hydraulic action. So you press in the and the body, the, the fluid of the body, naturally lengthens. As I said, this is in the domain of effortlessness. 
So you're not trying to stretch the body up in some way. You want to settle down and feel that exhalation, a little bit of lengthening without strain, without stress, and then let go for the in-breath. Those are the component parts of this wonderful Tao Yin form. Let's practice it together now. We've got a good sense of alignment. We've cultivated our chi. We've cultivated relaxed presence, settling, calming the nervous system, and bringing health and well-being to all the systems of our human organism. Now we're going to do this gesture uh, further encourages the openness on the subtle level and on the structural level as well. Begin with full spinal breathing. The elbows are moving back, the chest lightly opening, sternum opening, and exhale. You can move a little bit forward on this in-breath. There's your uprightness in-breath and smooth in. Draw back. Let that action be smooth. Good. Exhale. Let's do one more of those. Full spinal breathing. This time as you exhale into the form of that extension, we're going to open into yin-yang breathing. Exhale. Round the back. In breath. Exhale. Good. This time, long in breath. It's like in breath, in breath, in breath. Continue the in breath. And now exhale as you press down lightly. Feel that natural lengthening. And then in breath as you let go. Press again. And one more time. We'll do the sequence one more time. Turn the palms over, elbows go back, sternum lifts, heart opens, exhale. Back of heart open, in breath. Yeah, that's good. Exhale. The more smooth and even you can feel this, the deeper the ease will move throughout the system. So just let that be. Allow that. This time as we extend forward, we're going to open into yin-yang. And X. Backs of the hands are inclining so you feel that roundness in the mid-back. Exhale. This time, nice long in-breath. In, in, in. Continue in, in, breath. Now exhale as the palms go down the left and right channels, pressing, lengthening. Now let go for the in-breath. And X. A little bit of length. In-breath. Press. Now release your hands. Find your way into the gesture you're using for settled meditation. And as you relax and rest in here, the cultivation process is kind of completing, and now we're more in the allowing field of essential mindfulness that's just being with whatever arises in sensation and thought, emotion, whatever opens through the gateways of the senses. We're here with it with equanimity. The waves of the breath settle. The chi settles. Your heart, mind, spirit settle.
So these moments of ease and grace, the invitation is to feel from the inside out the boundaries of your skin. And in a way you feel the transparency of that, the luminosity. And just rest in there. Whatever may be arising in terms of thought, consideration, concern, memory, image, feeling, motion, tone, cat, just allowing that to be exactly as it is. We find this beautiful moment of poise where nothing is being excluded and we're not holding on to anything either. What is here right now? the perception of awareness and inside of that mirror letting go to awareness of awareness, which is not, you know, a subject-object thing. It is a, a natural allowing of this field of sometimes called non-duality. the presence of the paradox of perception and being. See if you can rest, and you can. Rest in this clarity of presence just for a moment. In the flow of our study and practice together, we have engaged with certain forms. We have begun to integrate principles like letting relaxed intention guide, direct the movement, what it means actually to be present, to connect with the value of dynamic relaxation, these are the, the principles that we integrate. We're also feeling the, 
the connection of the relative motion and relative stillness of our standing practices, connecting with that, connecting with form and flow, frame and flow, structure and energy, and these things as, lang as language <laughs> uh, gradually become more clear to us as we engage with them and connect with them in direct experience. Certainly okay to have the concept of it, but the real value is how it, how it moves into and through our lives and deepens in a very profound, real and profound way, not imaginary. So we know certain things like you know, people used to talk about auras, and if you heard somebody talk about auras, it was like woo-woo. Now we understand more in the, the development of science that the, the expression of energy has magnetic qualities through all the structures of manifestation. So everything has a magnetic field, and certainly our own bodies, our heart, our, our, our minds, um, and everything around us has its own kind of magnetic quality. The practices here of our, of our breathing in synchrony with motion uh, enhances the potential of, of great health, health of our human being that is not contracted even in subtle ways. And yes, remember that all of these things uh, take time. There is a natural unfolding of it. Today we worked with that deeper and more profound integration with the eight expressions of chi and the practice of, of the um, uh, compass breathing. And the compass breathing is a way of opening like we did yesterday, the other day when we were practicing. It seems like yesterday when we practice the opening gesture. Opening, allowing the, the internal organs to breathe and to be refreshed by the life force by any name. It has been absolutely a delight to be with you and to be part of this conclave of of uh, teachings and wonderful teachers. I want to thank Tia for being such a, a visionary in bringing this together. So we have an opportunity now to, uh, to have some reflections. Maybe you had some insight, maybe you have some questions, and I'll welcome Tia as our moderator. Thank you, Tisha. So I'll read what has come into the chat. It says, what is the main difference between Tai Chi and Qigong? That is a great question. I mean, happy to uh, take that up. The, the practices of Tai Chi are several hundred years old. They come from a, a family tradition and of, um, of a form of martial arts. You may see people in the park doing Tai Chi, and it looks like very slow movement, and it is. <laughs> so how can that be a martial art? <laughs> if I go so slow, I'll get slugged. The, the idea in the practice is to create wholeness. So it's not always about fighting, always about martial uh, acuity. It is about the, we move slowly in our qigong and in our tai chi, and I'll get specifically to that question in a moment that was asked. But we, we have a way of connecting this because it brings the, the calmness, the fullness of our attention into what's happening right now, both on the, uh, on the cognitive level and on the somatic on the somatic level, on the level of feeling and expression. So Qigong predates the practices of Tai Chi, but it's an energy practice. Tai Chi is an energy practice, opening the channels 
uh, allowing for greater potential for health and well-being. And then what's called Tai Chi Chuen is the forms of martial arts that are related to that. But they're also very relational. It's very much about connecting, um, smooth, harmonious connection. And by engaging with that, you get the benefits of both good Tai Chi and good Tai Chi instruction, and the benefits of Qigong, which are also that integration, wholeness, feeling, whole body breathing, all the uh, systems of the body, the viscera, everything is positively impacted by allowing the flow of qi, of life force, bioelectrical energy to move through the system with greater clarity. And that aspect of clarity is really the essence of the purpose of Tai Chi in its beautiful forms of movement and expression and in Qigong. So Qigong is where Tai Chi gets its Qi, you could say, in a way. You, um, you're practicing Qigong-like actions and integration of principle to get the most out of that. So it's not just flowery hands, you know, waving around. There is some movement, some opening and closing, like we did today in opening, expanding, and contracting. It's not just moving the hands. You see the difference here, right? I'm just moving my hands. When I breathe through the whole body, everything opens subtly, yes. Closing, yes. Same with Tai Chi. They have that feeling, the whole system moving to get together in harmony and uh, synchrony, often with the breath. Okay. Building off that helpful answer, uh, I'm going to ask a question for you as a musician and uh, mm -hmm. Qigong Dharma teacher. I have heard other people state Qigong to be comparable to the scales and the fundamental musical theory and Tai Chi to be uh, the, the jazz or the full uh, <laughs> composition of music. Is that a, a relevant comparison from your experience? Sure, I would think that's fair. That's fair to say. The spontaneous expression uh, of of qi, which comes from that sense of integration and practice over time, in Aikido is called takimusu. Takimusu aiki is a way of uh, be of maintaining or flowing in uh, in harmony. So the uh, the way of speaking of, of it is like music is frequency. And as we, as we move in our bodies, as we move harmoniously in dance or relationship in various ways, that harmony brings about that greater uh, coherency, as I was using that word yesterday, and a natural resilience through the body. So it positively, very positively impacts the complex system that we call our immune system as well. So music, yes. In the ancient times, it wasn't unusual for uh, people to be engaged in music, in martial arts, in health practices, in medicine. All of these things you know, were considered uh, an important weave to be able to, to play, to be able to express in various ways. Uh, was considered, you know, high education, <laughs> higher education. So, yeah, I hope that I kind of went around and about on that one, Tia, but... It's mm -hmm. helpful, so cool. thank you. Good. And as you guided us today in the sequenced practice of an integration practice, the question that's been uh, raised is that we know Tai Chi is always um, their forms with 24 or you know, certain numbers. Um, it's a sequence that's defined. To what extent is Qigong 
a series of set sequences? Beautiful question. Wonderful. So yes, Tai Chi has its short forms, its long forms, its medium forms, its 24, its 48, its 108, its lots of different ones. Um, I've even practiced a long form that is called Lia Haba Fa, which means, you know, uh, eight uh, methods and, and uh, six or eight combinations, six methods, that kind of thing. And it is an integration of principles. It's got like 230 moves to it, unique moves. It took me three years to learn that form back in the 90s. A beautiful kind of Tai Chi-ish form. Now, in our Qigong, today we did the eight expressions of Qi, and we did the sequence of the compass breathing, which uh, is also a sequence of various moves. Sometimes they are singular forms. In, in a lot of the uh, Qigong, we have practices like the Baduan Jin or the Eight Brocades. That's a particular sequence of practices. It's uh, often done by repeating the individual ones and then going on to the next form or practicing one into the next, into the next. Not unlike practicing Tai Chi in its uh, various uh, numbers of um, gestures. So there's a lot of similarities, there's some uniqueness, and the uniqueness comes from the distinctions that the teachers or the traditions have, uh, have brought. In other words, if you do the Baduan Jin with me, it'll be much different <laughs> than if you were to go to China and practice at the Shaolin Monastery. They're very rigorous with their Baduan Jin there, and uh, the stances are really low. Now, for them, in, in that particular development, that's important. For us, what do we want to engage? What's the purpose of our engagement in contemplative practice, in the integrative practices with Qigong Dharma? That is greater wholeness, greater sense of unity, the ability for uh, mental, emotional clarity, and... Um, yeah, better, you know, and on one level, it's about better thinking. Another level, it's, it's about vibrant health. Thank you. We have the question, if you are receptive to sharing the meaning of your Roshi name. Okay. Fudomio. Fudomio is a name of one of the kind of uh, the, uh, what are they called, the gods or the kings of Dharma. And uh, since I was very young, uh, I, was, uh, I had a great aunt who had spent a lot of time in China. And as I grew up in the household, uh, my grandmother's household, she was my grandmother's sister, I was named Fu. Who knows why? <laughs> <laughs> it was just it was just a nickname that kind of stuck, and my sister and my brother and and often my friends will just call me Fu. So Fu Domio is is an expression uh, is a dharmic expression of um, what's sometimes called immovability. Now that may seem contradictory in as much as I'm moving so much. <laughs> But the immovability is that deep sense of centeredness and settledness in the heart of the Dharma, that deep caring, the compassion, and not being able to be moved from that. So Fudomio is the immovable one. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And then we have the bell to... To resonate <laughs> along with that. So your name carries a lot. <laughs> well, on that uh, profound and delightful note, which your whole whole set of teachings has been both uh, animating and delightful and profound, we thank you with all our heart for contributing to our wisdom. Thank you. Yeah, it's been my deep pleasure. Thank you so much, Tia. Mm -hmm. Take good care, everyone. Thank you.